After watching this video, you should be able to describe the ECG extremity or limb leads and the frontal plane. Now the extremity leads can be divided into two major categories. The bipolar leads, leads 1, 2, and 3, and the unipolar leads, leads AVF, AVL, and AVR. We can put all these leads together and represent them on a hexaxial lead diagram in the frontal plane. It's also important to remember that the body acts as a conductor of electricity. Therefore, recording electrodes placed some distance from the heart, such as the arms and legs, can pick up the voltages of the cardiac currents conducted to these locations. It's also important to be clear about the difference in meaning between the ECG electrodes and the ECG leads. An electrode simply is used to detect electrical currents of the heart. An ECG lead shows the differences in voltage detected by the electrodes. So for the extremity leads, the limb leads, the patient has electrodes placed on the right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Typically they're on the wrists and ankles. Just want to also point out that the right leg electrode functions solely as an electrical ground, so we don't need to be concerned about that any further. Okay, so let's start with the bipolar leads, and they have this name because they record the differences in electrical voltage between two limb electrodes. For example, lead one records the difference in voltage recorded between the left arm electrode and the right arm electrode. Lead two records the difference between the left leg electrode and the right arm electrode. And finally, lead three records the difference between the left leg electrode and the left arm electrode. Inside the electrocardiograph machine, these subtractions are done. Now, leads one, two, and three, our bipolar limb leads, can be represented schematically in terms of an equilateral triangle. This is called Eindhoven's Triangle, named after a Dutch physician who invented the electrocardiograph in the early 1900s. So the idea is we have the heart in the center of this equilateral triangle, and we can now represent the three bipolar extremity leads on here. So here we have are 60 degrees in every angle, I'll off that up to 180. And we have our left arm over here, our right arm over here, and we'll put our left leg electrode down there. Now remember, the right leg electrode just functions in the electrical ground, so we're going to leave that off this triangle. Now we can put in lead one. Remember, lead one takes the left arm electrode and subtracts the right arm electrode, so we're going to put a positive pole of lead one over by the left arm on the left side and the negative pole of the lead on the right arm. Next we have lead two and remember lead two is the left leg electrode minus the right arm electrode so the positive pole of lead two will be down by the left leg and the negative pole will be up by the right arm. And then finally lead three is the left leg minus the left arm electrode so we'll put the plus again by the left leg electrode and the negative by the left arm electrode. And actually, if you look at the way the leads are organized, you can see that lead 1 plus lead 3 equals lead 2. You see how the left arm electrodes cancel out if you add lead 1 and lead 3, and you're left with left leg minus right arm, which is lead 2. And that relationship, lead 1 plus lead 3 equals lead 2, is known as Eindhoven's equation. And it's good practice, actually, that when you're looking at an ECG, you can quickly scan leads 1, 2, and 3 and see if this relationship holds true. So if you don't see that that relationship is true, then uh, perhaps the electrodes were not set up properly. Now we can redraw Eindhoven's triangle by sliding lead 1 downward, lead 2 rightward, and lead 3 leftward. And if we do that, we see that all the lines will intersect at a common central point, which is supposed to represent the center of the heart. And what we can do is we can represent that as a triaxial diagram. So we're going to put them in here. So there is lead one, there is lead two, and there is lead three, all intersecting at a common central point. We can put in the left, we can put in right, and then we have superior up top and inferior down below, and this is the frontal plane axis. So now there's lead one, the positive pole again is on the left arm, the negative pole over by the right arm, now remember, here's lead two, when we derived it from Eindhoven's triangle. And remember, down low inferior, that's the left leg, because that's the electrode that we're using that's inferiorly located. So that's going to be the left leg minus the right arm. And then lead three 
again is the positive pole is by the left leg and the negative pole is over by the left arm. Now let's add in the unipolar leads, the augmented voltage leads, and these are called unipolar because they're not taking one electrode and subtracting from another, they're doing something a little differently. What they're doing is they're taking the electrical voltage at one electrode relative to a zero potential. And in this case, the zero potential is obtained in the electrocardiograph machine by joining the three extremity leads to a central terminal and the sum of the right arm, left arm, and left leg electrodes equals zero, and the central terminal therefore has a zero voltage. So that's really what these unipolar augmented voltage leads are doing. So we can put in what they look like, and perpendicular to lead one, we have a unipolar lead, perpendicular to lead three, we have a unipolar lead, and then perpendicular to lead two, we have a unipolar lead. And we can label these, there's AVL, over on the left, we have AVR over on the right, and we have AVF down low inferiorly. And the, the L in AVL stands for left arm, the R in AVR stands for right arm, and then the F in AVF stands for left foot, which helps us remember where they're located. Now if we go and put in the polarities for our augmented leads, the positive pole of AVL is over on the left because it's taking the left arm electrode and subtracting it from that central terminal. So the plus is over here and the minus is down there. For AVR, it's taking the right arm electrode and subtracting it from the central terminal. So that's the plus over there on the right and the negative down here. And the AVF lead is taking the left leg electrode and subtracting from the central terminal. So the plus is down by the left leg and the minus is up there. Now let's put in the degrees. And that's fairly easy to do. I like to start first with the bipolar leads. So lead one at the positive pole is zero degrees. 60 degrees over, the positive pole of lead 2 is at plus 60 degrees. Another 60 degrees over is the positive pole of lead 3, which is at 120 degrees. At the negative pole of lead 1, it's plus or minus 180 degrees, depending on which side you came from, it's plus or minus. The negative pole of lead 2 is at negative 120 degrees. Another 60 degrees over, we're at the negative pole of lead 3, which is at negative 60 degrees. So you see that all of the bipolar leads are 60 degrees from each other. Now we can put in the degrees of the augmented leads, the unipolar extremity leads, and we see here that for AVF, it's perpendicular to lead one, so down by the positive pole of AVF, that must be plus 90 degrees, and the negative pole, therefore, must be at negative 90. If we look at the positive pole of AVL, it's perpendicular to lead two, so its positive pole is at negative 30 degrees, and its negative pole is plus 150 degrees. For AVR, it's perpendicular to lead three, so its positive pole must be at negative 150 degrees, and its negative pole is at plus 30 degrees. So there we have our frontal plane, our hexaxial diagram with all of our bipolar and unipolar extremity leads, the polarities, as well as the degrees. And it's essential that you know all of these leads, where their positive and negative poles are and at what degrees, because that's going to help us do a variety of things with the ECG interpretation that we'll discuss in another video. For example, calculating the mean QRS axis. And that concludes this video on ECG limb leads and the frontal plane.